I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. I do want to thank, make sure we thank the NFLPA for helping us out, uh, as well as uh, LASED for hosting us in this awesome venue, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick background and bio on Mary Ann, and then we'll get her and Ian up here and let them run the show. So Mary Ann Radley is the Chief Brand Officer for Pizza Hut US. In this role, she oversees the brand's advertising, digital marketing, consumer insights, culinary and quality assurance team, so basically everything, and works closely with the Pizza Hut leadership team to set the business vision and strategy. Uh, before joining Pizza Hut, Marianne served as the Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Monster Beverage in Corona. There she was responsible for all marketing, sponsorships, and activation efforts for the company and helped successfully launch Monster Energy Drink to 40 new countries over a period of 20 months. Prior to that, Marianne spent 15 years at AB InBev serving in roles ranging from field sales, sales promotion, new product innovation, and brand management. She was the first woman to be named a Budweiser brand manager in the company's history and went on to develop key experiential marketing platforms and initiatives for the brand. So obviously a really, really good person and I think you guys are gonna get a lot from her. So I'm super excited to welcome up Marianne and Ian. Cheers. Nice. Well, thank you everyone for staying awake through lunch and that big tacos. Um, Marianne, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for that. Was a uh, quite the intro. <laughs> it was like that's like half the presentation. Yeah, I great. hope so. I mean, yeah. get everybody yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, well, let's just hop right into it. Let, give me give me a little bit of sense of of Pizza Hut's approach to sports partnerships. Mm -hmm. well, what have you looked for in the past? Maybe you can lay out for us a little bit of the portfolio of assets you have right now. Sure. I mean, I, I think. Um, we look at we we got into jumped in with the NFL last year, so that was exciting. Um, we have for our approach. I'll take a step back. Our approach with with sports is really when you look at sports and pizza, it goes hand in hand. I mean, when you're when you're watching a game at home, you're ordering a pizza, maybe drinking a beer, maybe eating some wings. So it just really is a, a, an easy fit. So as we were looking at it with our brand, and you know, we've been around for 61 years, and and. The category is relevant, but how do we make our brand more relevant? How do we make it easier for customers to get to? And how do we make it more distinct? And that's kind of the platform I use and, and our team uses is creating a, a strong brand, really a red, red dynamic, relevant, easy, distinct. So our, our entry into sports was about how do we connect with fans, particularly with NFL when we signed the deal, is we wanted to bring the fan experience closer to people at home. I mean, every, every weekend you have hundreds of thousands of people in the stands, but there's millions more watching at home. So how do we connect with them in a very authentic and real way? Um, and then also for us, we've been very engaged in youth sports for a long time. Um, we have a very big literacy project, which is not necessarily tied to sports, but our commitment to youth and youth education. We've been doing the first book and um, literacy project for, gosh, 40 years. I mean, has anyone in here did, where you read five books and you get a free personal pan pizza? Anyone? Yeah. Yes. Book it program. Well, yeah. You got your book it? Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> so, so we've always been connected from the community with our book it program. And uh, so we, we tied it with the NCAA um, and that was just a natural, natural move for us as a brand. So sure. when you're thinking about where our core is and what we do, we are about family, we're about togetherness, we're about fun, and we're about sports. And so it was natural. I mean, it was a great opportunity for us to jump in with the NFL last year. Um, we announced the deal, and it was six weeks later we had the we had the draft. So it was definitely a. I came on in February, so it was February of last year. I came on board, and we announced the deal in April, and then we had six weeks to execute the um, NFL draft. And Gene, I mean, we're, I, we yeah, we spent a lot of time up in New York meeting with the NFL team and the NFL PA, and uh, they were great partners. And um, it was good, and it was really how do we activate in a way that's authentic? We're not about sure. we don't want to slap a logo. And we don't have a brand awareness issue. I mean, Pizza Hut has a 98.6% brand awareness around the world, actually. Um, so that's not a brand awareness issue. It's a brand relevancy issue. So that's really our tie with sports is to become more relevant. So you mentioned there that six weeks or so mm -hmm. span before yeah. the draft. I mean, it's talk about like feet to the fire right yeah. there. How did you yeah. even? No sleep, a lot of monster. Yeah. <laughs> I a believe lot of pizza. it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. At least yeah, you, weren't, you weren't hungry, pizza. so yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, but how did you sort of go about that process? I mean, how is that build out when mm -hmm. you're, you have that huge event like that and you really want to make that big splash alongside that? Yeah, well, I think we were, well, I have to say, we, I think, I know, we were very <laughs> fortunate that it was in Dallas. That's our backyard. Our offices are in Plano. So that was very helpful for us. I think if it was in Seattle or sure. 
in LA, it might have been a little bit more of a challenge. Um, so to set up the infrastructure, our focus was about activation on site to really leave a good impression with people attending. Uh, it was a great opportunity for fans to get uh, the draft and what the NFL has done with the draft over the years has been unbelievable. It has become a cultural event. They have really dialed it up. And if anyone had the opportunity to go to Nashville this year, it was really phenomenal. As much as it was raining, it was it was so much fun. And um, but having Dallas, it was. You bring your fans in, they're gonna go in, they're gonna cheer for the team. It's a moment of hope that even, even the worst teams have this moment of hope that they're gonna be the best team of the season. And we wanted to capture that a little bit and we wanted to make it exciting for people that are in the parking lot, either they can't get in or they're going in, that they're having some sort of engagement and some take home with them. So mm -hmm. we built out a big activation area. We gave away free pizzas, which is always goes well. Um, <laughs> We had, we had players come by, you know, a lot of our players came by and had some fan interaction with the players. Uh, we created a 360 experience because our big kick was the doorbell dance. So when you're, you know, we see the touchdown dance and how do we tie football and pizza in with a touchdown dance? It's really when you get your pizza delivered at home, you're kind of doing a doorbell dance that, hey, yeah, my pizza's here, my wings are here, I'm ready to, yeah. So we created a doorbell dance experience there and, um, and just got fans engaged and excited about it. And that's really, that's really what our approach is, yeah. How has that sort of bled in then once you could kind of digest and pardon the pun and, and go into the regular season, go into the Super yeah. Bowl? How do you how do you sort of translate some of that, you know, dive right in mentality mm -hmm. to sort of season long campaign or, or build up to the Super Bowl in a lot of ways? Yeah, I think when you go to the relevancy, um, as we're activating through the year, it was we wanted to associate ourselves with some teams. So mm -hmm. we knew right off we needed some team sponsorships and we also wanted some player sponsorships um, and, and partnerships. So actually, our, our teams, we, we selected to work with four teams, the, the Rams, the Chargers, so I'm in the right <laughs> building here, uh, the Rams and the Chargers. Uh, we did the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks. And, and three of the four teams made it to the postseason, so that was a pretty, bad, good, yeah. pretty good track record. Won some money in Vegas on that one. Um, and uh, our players, we looked at players that had the same sort of moral, I, you know, every player contract you have, there's always a moral, there's always a moral clause in it. But it, we are a family brand, mm -hmm. and we're a fun brand, and we don't take our, we really don't need to take ourselves too seriously. But we want to make sure we have players that are authentic, and that have that core love for the for the brand and for the product, and had some sort of memory about the about Pizza Hut and a great experience. And so, like Todd Gurley, it was just great. His he was very connected with his Pizza Hut back home in the Carolinas, and when he goes home, he he's always shooting foot you know he's shooting videos of him driving through there's a drive through at his pizza and he brings picks up a bunch of pizzas and brings it to local kids in the neighborhood um, Tyler Lockett with the Seahawks I mean he is just such a great human being he really is just such a great guy and he's someone who just commits so much to the community and that's the players that we want to be with we want to be with good players it's great if they're good on the field, but it's even better when they're good off the field, and that's what our approach is. Um, and it just fits well with our plan. So for us, it was locking in the teams, locking in some players, and getting content, and getting some really relevant and authentic connections with our brand. Yeah. Do you have something like the NCAA property versus that? I mean, it has mm -hmm. to be obviously a little bit different strategy, just given how each sort of yeah. property is structured. Where do you see sort of similarities in certain ways, or maybe you can pulled some of that strategy in, or, and where is it really differed, where maybe that's let you guys had success in other ways that you couldn't have done against the other one? Yeah, the similarities, first of all, is the, is the love of the game and sport, sure. I mean, the passion for sports that the fans have and everyone who's attending the events. Um, where we have uh, a unique kind of entry with the NCAA, and we do our game day broadcast on Saturday and get in the fan zone, I mean, those college kids are there at you know four in the morning. Actually, some of them are there camping out for college game day, They're, they get there like, um, 7 a.m. on Friday for the college game day broadcast on Saturday. So we're there feeding them pizzas leading up into then. So they're just, I mean, by the time college game day kicks off, they are in this frenzied state that you haven't, uh, you don't really see um, up close and personal as much when we're at the NFL. At the NFL games, I mean, it, it absolutely, you have those frenzied fans, but this is just a younger, um, just, they have so much energy. Um, and so our activation with them is we, we've got to figure out how to connect with them and how to talk with them in a way that they understand. Um, there's a lot of, of, of consumers and, and fans that are you know, maybe 35 and over who, who remember going to the Pizza Hut restaurant after Little League or going there for their first date or their birthday parties and 
you know, playing Pac-Man. I see you nodding, so I'm hoping you're yeah, <laughs> Pac-Man and and yeah, yeah. breadsticks. You know, your little your little thing with your pan pizza on it. Yeah, I mean, it was the red and white checkered tablecloths. I mean, there's all these great memories, and there's this generation that hasn't had that experience. I and mean, we have we still have 2,500 dining restaurants, but a lot of them are in in um, the mid Midwest, and a lot are in more rural markets. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at the coverage of um, of NFL and the overlap there, we really don't have a lot of dine-in restaurants there. So our approach was how do we get that, that love of the brand to those customers that are either looking at the game and then at the college, the college students, it was activation, activation the day of the broadcast, and then bringing our pizza and some of our great excitement around our brand and even some of our kind of nostalgic equities to them. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's really, it's a love of sport is very consistent across both. Sure. But, um, for NCAA, though, we just don't do football. Though. We do all of the right. NCAA sports, so uh, women's lacrosse, uh, swimming, diving, and that just gives us a broader reach. And it's really, there's some of those great celebratory moments that being part of and just going to some of these, there, there are sports I've gone to now through this partnership that I'd never gone. I, I was a college athlete. I never went to some of these events. And then going to them, it was just so great seeing the, the fervor and the excitement and then connecting with the, the families and the parents of some of these athletes. It's just really fun. Sure. Well, you yeah. touched on some of those nostalgic elements, things that people remember of the brand. I mean, the you brought back the old logo recently. Yeah, we did. We just did. Yeah. How, how does that sort of tie into the sports strategy going forward? Do you maybe, does nostalgia become sort of a larger play in that, do you think? Yeah. So part of our charge is we're, again, trying to make our brand relevant, easy, and distinct. It's really that distinctiveness is that I'm focused on right now. and. Um, when you're looking at a platform, and I'm going to go back to the red, relevant, the pizza category is relevant, and then also being part of a cultural con conversation, whether you're in engaging through social media, uh, being part of uh, relevant type advertising a bit, that helps you with the relevance. Easy, our technology, you know, your ease of ordering through apps, your digital interaction, your hot, fast, reliable delivery from, from the restaurant to the, to the door. Gosh, I'm using a lot of um, industry language. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just let me, uh, but making sure that you can get our product easily sure. and it's delivered. And, uh, but then distinctiveness really, really focuses on advertising. That is, what is the, how do you cut through? I mean, the pizza category is very cluttered. So for distinctiveness, what we did, there's, there's two ways to make your brand distinctive. You can either develop a new asset in equities or you can look at existing asset in equities. So we decided, let's look at some existing asset in equities. We did working with our agency, which is a phenomenal agency out of Austin, GSDNM. Mm -hmm. And then also we have an agency out here in California named Collider who, um, who does a lot of insights. We worked with them for about five months and digging into what assets do we have as a brand? Because, um, as we're looking through what will people gravitate towards. And we did this, we, we talked to 3,000 customers. Actually, it was a really fun journey. We went up to Kansas to our, we have a Pizza Hut Museum on Wichita, in Wichita State Campus, if you haven't seen it. It's where our first Pizza Hut was. Um, pizza Hut was named Pizza Hut because uh, Dan and uh, the Carney brothers, when they started the restaurant, they had a sign and it could only fit seven letters. So that's why it was named Pizza Hut. That, that's a true story. So $600 they started the restaurant, and, um, but that's where our museum is. And we went up there and spent some two days there just mining through our assets, just looking at these great things that, that the brand had. And then we, we went out in front of about 3,000 customers and did qualitative studies with them on where, what is the position that Pizza Hut has. And what was fed back to us is you're the original American pizza. We are the first pizza chain in the country. We are the first pizza chain in the com country. We are the first uh, product you can order off the internet. So we were the original American, American original pizza chain, I guess you could say. Um, and it was the classic iconic logo of you, that looked so unapologetically confident mm -hmm. and bold. And what we were being fed back from customers were like, hey, you're the OG of the pizza company. You need to start acting like it. And you're, and that boldness and confidence. And, and I think over the years, you know, we're a Midwest company originally starting, that we started, you, you can't be too boastful. It's w it w within the fabric of our company, I guess. You can't be too sure. boastful, but you can be proud. And so our positioning that we did with bringing back the classic logo in our advertising is just being a more bold and unapologetically confident company. Um, you know, take more risks, live fearlessly, break some dishes when, you know, we don't need to be perfect. Um, everyone's looking at, how do you be, become and stay clean and polished when we're all under such a microscope with social media and everyone's watching it from a company standpoint? But it's okay to have a little bumps and bruises. And so that's what we encourage our team is, hey, let, let's take more risks and more chances. And, and that logo that we just launched out with our Cheesy Bites, just, um, just in our, our new window that launched two weeks ago, but we're actually gonna be support all of our NFL advertising and fourth quarter advertising is gonna have that classic look. And we've had a lot of great feedback to it. It fits in, 
I, you look at it and as a marketer, you look at it like, oh, the brand pop. You can see it on a you know, billboard when you're 50 yards away or half a mile away, but it also just has this really cool kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to take any shit kind of feel to it. I love that look of that, of that logo. So um, that's the New Yorker and me coming out. Fair but uh, I, I, love, I love that logo. I'm excited that we were able to bring it back. Our, our franchisees are excited and just the feedback we're getting now just from customers who just love seeing that oh, and sure. so glad that we brought it back. Yeah. Now, over your career, you've had a chance to work with some brands, some properties that, to your point about Pizza Hut, don't need to fight for relevancy. Yeah. Everyone sort of knows it. You maybe worked at some some brands that were still sort of you know challenger brands, emerging brands, mm -hmm. or even on products within those companies that were sort of being pushed out there. When you think about how that works in the sports sponsorship landscape, where where do you find successes in those areas? How, how does your strategy sort of switch based on your sort of market position in, in a way? You know, Monster, Monster Energy, we did not do any above the line TV. We did not do any national TV campaigns. If you see a Monster commercial, it's usually for maybe a Monster event coming into market, you know, um, and it's usually the local promoters putting, there were no TV commercials there. So I then moved to Pizza Hut where all, there's so much, the whole system is trained on, you need to have a TV commercial to be successful. Monster Energy, what we did was we tied in closely with athletes um, and just tying into that feverish, you know, showed up, show up to X Games with a pocket full of cash and say, hey, I'll give you a thousand bucks if you put this M Claw logo on your helmet. And they did. And that's how we started doing our branding. Um, we'd show up to truck stops and give cases of, of uh, Monster out to truck drivers, long haul drivers, to get them to just drink the brand and like it and be taking it from state to state when we're first starting out. Um, but it was really knowing what the unlock of the passion behind the sport and just getting loyalty around it, having an ambassador that is just totally, you know, kick, I, I'm sorry to say kick ass, but kick ass. <laughs> you could say it, sorry. And that's, you know, and, and that's really how Monster, all of our marketing was built on tying to that, that sure. really that passion for the brand. And for us, for the brand, it was, for Monster, it was really tied into um, when we're looking at extreme sports and the sports that just had a much lower cost of entry, truthfully. I mean, that's why we got into them. It was a lower cost of entry and it was all about, uh, Mark Hall at the time created just this great logo with the M claw and, and that was that monster claw is just what everyone wanted and we, we realized the power of that and being able to just give, you know, some dollars, a t-shirt and, and a sticker and they were, they were part, of our, part of our army. Go to Pizza Hut and it's an established brand that's been around, like I said, 61 mm -hmm. years that were always known for doing these, like they were all, we were always involved in pop culture in the 80s. I mean, it was, you, you had, we we're in uh, uh, Back to the Future 2. You've sure. got, I mean, we were just, in, anyone watch Stranger Things? They, they just showed a pizza. <laughs> we didn't pay for that. It was great. They put a Pizza Hut, pizza hut <laughs> box in there because it, it fits perfectly with that time. But um, it was, we were always part of, and we invested heavy in TV. Coming on board in February last year, I have to retrain our system that TV is not the solve. It's not a solve. Um, it, it's something that we've become used to and we, it, it's like a pacifier and it shouldn't be. We need to find unique ways to talk to customers because that's where not all, you know, not all media is consumed on TV. And companies can be very successful without television, Monster being one of them. I think they're sure. a 35 billion cap company right now. So. Um, that's, you know, we have to continue to, to challenge ourselves and challenge our organization on how do we look at the business differently? How do we advertise differently and market differently? How do we talk to customers differently? How do we partner with, with athletes differently and leagues and partner, um, you know, partners and teams? And it's, there's got to be a different approach because it's absolutely evolving from where it was 10 and 15 years ago. Yeah. Do you think that leagues, teams, other sort of rights holders, I guess, in that mm -hmm. respect, view it the same way that they'll let you sort of evolve the partnership so it's also successful for you? You know, you, you get a good partnership and, and the NFL has been great to work with and the NFL PA, Gene, I'm not saying that just because you're sitting right there, <laughs> but you guys have been great partners as well. They're always just, but it's interesting when you're, when you're used to doing business a certain way, when you try to disrupt it a bit, everyone gets uncomfortable. Sure. And um, what, as we looked at last year when we announced the deal and it was six weeks to draft, there were a lot of things that we were pushing that may have made people feel a bit uncomfortable. And when you had a, if you have to push a little bit too much, um, and shame on us, we you, sometimes you, you back off and you don't really fight for it. And if, if it's worth pushing on, you got to fight for it. So year two, we're fighting for a lot more, mm -hmm. and just not necessarily fighting, but pushing harder and trusting our instinct more. And a lot of what we did, and we had some great player content last year that, uh, as we were as we were having kind of discussions with the NFL on what we, how we would love to leverage players, there was definitely a little bit of uncomfortableness on what we wanted to do. And we had a great 
with Todd Gurley, he was his bye week, he's at home watching the Minnesota Vikings with his friends, and we were able to go in there with cameras and film. He's ordered a bunch of pizza pizzas and our wings, and it was a truly authentic, it was not staged. We were not saying, now grab the pizza and take a bite. Okay? <laughs> it was him and his, him and his buddies sure. hanging out watching the game, and us creating that and getting, you know, kind of invading, a, not invading a bit in their space, but actually coming into an authentic space and an authentic interaction with our brand is what we want. I think that's what every brand wants. And yeah. so we have to keep pushing for that um, so that everything isn't so sterile and corporate and polished. Every, you know, consumers are much smarter now. They want real connections. I mean, they want a brand that, that's their buddy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what we have to continue to push is that, hey, you know, we're, we're we're your friend. We're your, you know, we're your, we're your challenger. We're your friend. We want you. We're your comfort food. Uh, we're your social pacifier, perhaps. Um, that's what we have to continue to do. So, are there other, you know, you mentioned sort of moving away a little bit from TV. Obviously, mm -hmm. things like I'm sure these athlete partnerships mm -hmm. and doing things in authentic ways. Are there other areas that you see sort of out in the marketing world where maybe you can shift some dollars towards or or shift some focus in a certain area that maybe. Not to say we'll give you the same return, but maybe you're emerging, uh, you think, sort of. Well, it, not emerging, it's very common. <laughs> Fair I mean, enough. Esports, e I, mean, I mean, everyone every, everyone talks about esports. And we, we've, we've got, and we, we had been involved um, esports on a very, I guess, a very uh, generic way uh, many years ago where we tied in with video game releases. and, mm. and um, But now it's just tying into, again, how do you be, you're not a sponsor of a league, you're actually part of the experience. Uh, actually, this this year, uh, Anne Hand, who's the CEO of Super League, she and I did a fireside chat together at the IEG World up in um, Chicago. And we're, we're working together on a few things, and it's just how do you integrate with them, uh, not again to slap your logo as an association, but really in an authentic way. Uh, so esports, I mean, it's that is everyone's in, engaged in that space. So I wouldn't even say that's emerging, but. I think there's a lot of opportunity that has not been leveraged from from a um, community, from a from a youth sports that sure. that has not been leveraged the way, and not, and I'm not saying to leverage it to uh, market or capitalize, but to really to help upbring the next generation of of players and human. You know, just you you want to create a community of good people, right? And so, how do you get engaged them at a local level and the youth and support them, and not just from sports, but just with whatever their passions are. I also think there's there's opportunities we're seeing in marketing from um, with with more dedicated SEM and SEO and and really understanding your your audience attribution and segmentation so that dollars media dollars are getting harder to come by. Your TRPs are much more expensive now. Inflation is up. You've got your uh, your major networks are shrinking the amount of of um, commercials that they have now in their pods, so they're charging more for a spot. So how do you be smarter with your media dollars? And that's where you have to have a performance marketing team to dig in on where do you spend the dollar and what you're getting your best ROAS on. Sure. You, you mentioned yeah. sort of esports as a space that maybe there's opportunity, youth sports. So in terms of moving into new partnerships in the sports space, mm -hmm. is there, do you think there's still room for Pizza Hut to kind of grow there? Do you think there's more opportunity sort of in the sports that you're already in to yeah. sort of you know, if there wasn't room for pizza to grow, I'd be out of a job. Uh, so yes, point. there's Fair plenty enough. of room for pizza to grow. Yeah, I, I, there is, and and it's not just you know for us we we have we have great wings. I mean there's there's a whole sure. other food segment that we haven't even been we haven't even scratched the surface on, um, and our product innovation of desserts and sides and all. So there's other sales layers that we need to be starting to tackle and mm -hmm. and, and start to um, figure out, figure out how to market and message that while integrating with partnerships. Uh, but we still have a lot, lot more. We, we have a few more bites at the apple that we need to be doing with with NFL. We we have a lot more uh, that we should be doing. We've actually learned a lot coming out of year one. We stubbed our toe on a few things too that we looked at. Um, you know, I think when you come in and you you sign some players and you're excited. And you, you know, we had uh, Jared Goff and, and Todd Gurley making it to the Super Bowl, and it's like, oh my gosh, how do we leverage this sponsorship? And, and sometimes you, you put you put players in a position that they may not be comfortable with, or you may you put them in a position that may not be authentic to them. And you're asking them, and that's where we had to take a step back in year two and say we need to partner and make sure it's something that is natural to them. Let's think of what they want to do first, and then how do we integrate ourselves with it? Sure. As opposed to you have a contract, this is what you have to do. It really has to be something that they want to do and what they're passionate about. And it may not even have to do with football. Mm. And you have to listen to that and understand, okay, now how do I parlay that into our brand and it fits in with what they're looking for. Yeah. How do you go about making sure that there there is that authentic connection? I mean, is it just a matter of talking to them, their agents, the PA, so on and so forth? You know, it's I don't think it's about talking to them. I think it's about listening. 
you need enough. to you need to listen. There's a lot, you know, as as a sponsor and as a partner, come in and and I've learned that over the years is that uh, you 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 tend to talk. Oh, we've got this contract. You've got four appearances. You've got certain. You guys have probably all lived this. You've got you know. For, and instead, it's, hey, what do you want to get out of this partnership? And I think that's the best way to start a conversation, mm-hmm. particularly when you're going into a partnership with a player. What do you want to get out of this? How do you see it? And then um, look at what, is, what are some of your passion points? What do you like? I mean, I, I, I said Tyler Lockett, but really, he's got such a passion point for community. He's got this great commitment to the homeless. He just delivered a bunch of pizzas to the homeless shelters last week up in the Seattle market. We had nothing to do with that, but it was like something that he's passionate about. Um, part of what he wanted to do as partners with us is he's like, hey, I'd love to bring a bunch of kids from our, my foundation down to your Plano office and make pizzas in your office, in, in your kitchen. Oh my, absolutely, whatever you, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is just great. So for us, it's listening to them what they want to do. But at the end of the day, it is, you know, we need to, the dollars we spend is representative of our franchisees' dollars. We are representing 130 independent business owners. It's their money that we're spending as we're doing these contracts and these negotiations and deals. So everything at the end of the day either needs to drive traffic and transactions or bring new customers into the brand. And if I, if I said anything different, I'd be misleading the audience. But that really is what I'm held accountable for, is how do we bring new, new traffic in, how do we bring new customers in, and how do we grow the brand in sales? Um, so it's just trying to figure out how you do that, that it's a great partnership, um, and that you're landing on, at the end of the day, it's pizza, and it's fun. And all that other noise can go by the side, but, <laughs> You know, no one throws a sandwich party. They throw pizza parties, right? <laughs> and the fact that we now, the fact that we're now delivering and, and delivering beer, we've got beer delivery and we'll be in a thousand stores, a thousand restaurants delivering beer uh, by the end of this summer. Talk about hitting on that ease. So you could be, you know, Sunday, go, turn on the NFL football game, sit down and order your pizza, your wings, and your beer all sure. delivered to your, your home, a one-stop shop. So we're continuing to look at what other layers. Uh, we're building in late night. We need to be open late night. We started as a restaurant, so we always had restaurant hours. You know, our stores would close at 10. And the late night business got a bit away from us. So now it's we need to get into the late night game. And those are the other areas that we're looking at. Yeah. You touched on it a few places on sort of what we'll see sort of, I guess, year two-ish in a way in, in the round mm-hmm. NFL, if you want to call it that. Give us a little bit of preview of, of what the platform will be going into next season. How, you know, what, are, what are at least for you some of the highlights and, and what can kind of folks that are tuned in get yeah. excited for? Well, coming out of, uh, I'll say coming out of our first year, our highlight Super Bowl, we, I think we really did a masterful job. It's here. I was very happy with our team and what they were able to accomplish for Super Bowl. Uh, we had our, our Super Bowl babies, so that was taking it from <laughs> really opening up to people that were actually delivering. Uh, you know, we were saying all oh, our players over deliver all the time, over to, and when actually people that are delivering on Super Bowl day, that the, the first baby born uh, after kickoff, won free, that family won free pizza for a year and tickets the next year's Super Bowl. Um, and we were getting a lot of people like trying to force their, come on, you know, we were getting all kinds of messages the night before Super Bowl of I fed my wife sauerkraut and, you know, beer and hot peppers, trying to get her, you know, it's like, uh, but, um, that you know that the Super Bowl babies was great. We also did uh, in the two local markets in, in LA and up in um, in New England. We had uh, pizzas delivered to all the all the maternity wards that people that were delivering on had babies delivered on Super Bowl. We delivered pizzas to them. So being again tying back into that family element, uh, and then we had great activation area. I mean the activation area at the, our Super Bowl. I you know anyone who saw it, I thought it was the bell of the ball. I thought we had probably we had the longest lines. Uh, we had the longest wait. Uh, of course, giving out free pizza helps, but then having the 360 dance, where, and we had a lot of players show up um, and, and integrate and interact with, our, with the consumers. Going into this year, again, dialing back to it needs to drive traffic and transactions, we are going big on, you know, our, our, we've got our packaging that is, we can tie in with the NFL, and we can, as we're looking at our distinctiveness work that we're doing, and kind of do an old school feel. How do we? How does that relate to football? How does that old school feel relate to the NFL? And how does that old school football feel and old school look relate to whether NCAA or anything that we're doing? So we're we're having a lot of fun there. We're doing a lot. We're going to be having some some um, great great. Uh, I can't announce it yet. My Fair my, no my director got my my P, my director of PR is going to come after me wherever wherever he is. <laughs> because we are a publicly traded company, so I can't share this. No until worries. I got another week till I can share it. <laughs> um, but uh, just, we're gonna be leveraging a lot more the content of players, uh, the integration with our brand with those players. 
Um, we've got some terrific things that we're going to be um, shooting next week that will be airing on TV and, and on digital and social. Um, and then it's elevating our experiences for the customers, uniquely pizza experiences that are associated with NFL as well. Uh, and then at college and NCAA, you know, we've got, you got Thursday night football with NFL, you got Friday night lights with high school, and our, again, our pizza restaurants are really tied in with the community. Saturday, you got college football, Sunday's NFL, Monday's NFL. So we've got five days of the week pretty locked up. How do we make the other days work a little bit harder for us? And we're doing some unique things to tie to kind of build up the runway going into the, into the football viewing weekend. So, so a lot of really, you know, like I said, player integration, but also uh, taking a look at bringing that, we need to bring those customers closer to the game and the experience. Sure. And we're gonna be giving, giving away a lot of opportunities to do that, so. You touched on the Super Bowl activation mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I mean, it seems like leagues, teams, properties, are trying to make their events big, or if they're already big, like the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. even bigger. From yeah. from a brand point of view, where have you found success in, on an on-site activation? What are some of the things that maybe sort of been forced on you, whether it's footprint mm -hmm. or what you can do that maybe you've, you've walked away and said, we could have done, maybe done that a little bit better? So for Atlanta, with the Super Bowl being Atlanta, we turned Atlanta into Hutlanta, which was good. Then we changed our, our pizza at restaurants to Pizza Hut Hut <laughs> to tie in. And we thought that was, yeah, it's, that's great. But we could have done a, a better job at that, I think, of, of doing a little bit more broader. Um, you know, there were some select, so select restaurants. So that's very tactical, select restaurants we did. And I think we could have done a, cast a wider net on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, gosh, I'm saying I think a lot. I know. <laughs> um, Going into uh, this year, what we could do better is, you know, I touched on it a little bit earlier, was um, the authentic connection with the, with the players. Sure. But I also want to go a little bit further in the storytelling, and we need to do a better job at storytelling on, um, on how our product integrates. Um, and not just our product itself, but the memories of Pizza Hut and their experience with Pizza Hut. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few NFL players that actually worked at Pizza Hut when they were teenagers. Um, we've got a couple NFL players whose parents worked at Pizza Hut. Um, so there's a lot of really unique stories that our, that our brand has been um, part of, and I think we need to kind of tap into that a bit. And as we're looking at Super Bowl this year, it's expanding on our activation, and um, we know what people loved and really gravitated towards, but I'd, I'd like to take that experience and make it more mobile to people that can't get down to the Super Bowl and take it more and leverage it a little bit more during playoffs and le leverage it more during the, during the season. So those are some things that we're gonna be doing. Cool. Yeah. I know how bad it is when someone hogs all the pizza, so I wanna open the floor yeah. to questions. <laughs> um, anybody out there has something from Aaron that they wanna ask? Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe you're right up. Yeah. Um, in terms of Yeah, you know that's that's a uh, that's a passion point of mine. So we are looking at that. Now we are heavily we in fact when you look at our uh, engagement and what we do from an activation in NCAA, we we skew heavier in support around the, the female sports because there is you know we need to have a, a broader stage for women, particularly in professional sports. Um, so we really focus in on the NCAA and supporting women's sports and women's college sports there. Uh, we um, but there's always opportunity and we are trying to push that. Yeah. You know. Thank you, that's a great question. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned, oh, thanks. So you mentioned how everything you guys do needs to drive uh, traffic and transactions. Mm -hmm. So how is the NFL measured and shown that their partnership's doing that for you? Mm -hmm. for, for the first year we looked at our, it was, yeah, I mentioned we don't have a brand awareness issue, but we had a brand relevancy issue. And so we do relevancy, brand relevancy testing and scoring, and we look at our pre and pro our pre and po, I say pro, oh yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's we, we did the relevancy score prior to the, to the deal and we see where we're falling off. There's, there's actually age segments that we're very, that we have opportunity. And that's really as our messaging and our advertising and even our partnerships and, and associations with players, it's really to, to look at some of those age segments that, that have that following and have that audience. Um, a great example, Juju Smith-Schuster, and he's been a fantastic partner with us. Um, he's, got, he's got a really broader reach with a younger audience. And um, that kind of came about, our, our association with him was, um, you know, we wanted to time with him, because first of all, he was dynamic. He was a rising player. Um, he's a great guy. I love his mom. I mean, he, you know, it's just like, there's so many things about him that are great with, with Juju and his family. And um, it's, it just had a great, he had a great reach for that younger audience. And as we got in, more engaged with him, 
you know, we, we got him early. We got him early, and then he had an unbelievable, success, unbelievably successful season, and I was so happy for him. But he, um, that talked to an audience that we may have been missing over the past, the past few years. So it's really important that we kind of align ourselves with those, look at our strategies and the pillars on, on who we're associating ourselves at, who it talks to. So brand relevancy, and then even as we're looking at um, in, the, in the teams, that, the team markets, how has our business improved there? Uh, and also the store level economics. Store level economics are important to us as well. And, and how does the, tra the traffic and the business of, of NFL and associating with NFL and the viewership and the and, um, increased stage and presence and branding, how is that driving transactions? And that we look at that as well. Um, so yeah, that's how we measure it all. Send it back for you. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned the specific club partnerships you had were the mm -hmm. before the Seahawks, Steelers, Rams, and Chargers. Um, did you look at all 32 teams, and what what made you select those four? So we selected those four. First, we looked at what was available. There were some teams that already had existing partnerships, um, uh, some with competitors of ours, or there was a, a, a QSR, which is Quick Server Restaurant, uh, QSR lockup already that they could not approach. They could not deal with us. But what we did look at the, the teams that were available, we then looked at where were, how did it overlay with the amount of Pizza Hut business we had in Pizza Hut stores. So did it fit a business need? LA is a very big market for us. The California, Southern California is a very big market. And it's also has a little bit of, um, it's got a lot of pressures on it. It's a high wage market. And we're seeing, you know, you're gonna look at another minimum wage, the margins on, in pizza and pizza Hut are, are very thin. And so when you're looking at, you've got these constant pressures from an economic, and again, the store level economic model, uh, where you're, you're your hourly rate is going up to $12, $14, $15 an hour, you're driving a pizza to deliver a pizza 15 minutes away and 15 minutes back to the store, you've just used you know, $7.50 to deliver that $7.99 pizza, right? So we were looking at how do we give a bigger voice to these markets? And then we also looked at um, teams as far as their, uh, their following, their fan base. We overlaid it on, from a national map on who has the highest fan base nationally. Um, and we looked at also tying it in from a media perspective on how big of a media and a, a DMA they had from a broadcast standpoint. So those were all kind of what we looked at. And then it's who I liked because I'm a Rams fan. So you know, <laughs> I, got, I got to weigh in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> There's a new wave of companies putting their logos on jerseys. I mm -hmm. read something where the Clippers made $3 million in kind of ad revenue when mm -hmm. Kawhi and Paul George went there based off all the jersey swaps on Instagram. Is that something Pizza Hut wants to get into in the future with it being a risk of teams panning out and then just why or why not? Yeah, I mean, I, I call that the NASCAR approach, right? It looks like a NASCAR uniform. I don't think that's, you know, it's, it's the NFL is really, it's, it's whether or not the league is, is moving in that direction. Um, for us, we haven't even considered it. We don't even ask for it. We, it's the NFL is really the one that would lead the charge on, on what the teams would be allowing from a, and the NFL um, Owners Association would really be leading the charge on what, um, what they can do for the uniforms. So we've never even talked or discussed it. Uh, we do like them to you know, maybe wear a pizza t-shirt when they're off the field, but, uh, but we haven't talked at all about putting it on their uniforms. Thank you. Um, are you seeing a challenge from the fast casual space kind of growing with Blaze Pizza, CPK? Um, and then also kind of the accessibility mm -hmm. to them on delivery because mm -hmm. of Postmates and Seamless? Yeah, I think when you look at the, um, the aggregators first, I'll talk about the aggregators, Postmates, Grubhub, um, Uber Eats. That is definitely, I look at it all as share of stomach, and that was a, you know, we use that term in, in the beer business, and I, I use it here too, is that if you're losing share of stomach that someone's not eating your product, they're eating someone else's. Uh, so the aggregators, they, we invested in, we actually bought part of Grubhub. So Yum, as a corporation, we invested in Grubhub, and it was really because we wanted to, we didn't want to sit and watch what happened. We wanted to get some learnings from it. And for us, it was really about understanding the customer, the need state, and getting into the data. So we have our hand and kind of our finger on the pulse with that. As we're looking at the casuals, the, the mod pizzas and, and the blaze, it's, it's a different customer. Um, for the most part, our actually Pizza Hut, our, our, our customer um, annual average salary for a year is anywhere from 55,000 to 80,000 a year. Uh, when you're looking at the aggregators, their average salary of those customers are the post is 125,000. It's a two different customer sets. And then for the fast casual dining, it's a completely different experience because you're, you're dining, we, we provide the delivery. And it's a different experience and it's also a higher, higher income customer. 
What we have learned though is that you know, we, are, we do delivery really well. We have 6,700 stores that we are the best at that last mile delivery. There is no one that does it better than we do. And as people are getting into the delivery game, they really are understanding how truly difficult it is. Uh, when you order, I, you, we, we have discussions, hey, we're gonna put Pizza Hut on Grubhub. I have a hard time with that because I don't want someone to order a pizza at Pizza and have it delivered between 90 and 110 minutes. You know, that's a challenge. You want them to get it within 30 minutes and have a really good experience with your product. So we do have, um, we're constantly watching it. We are, are engaged uh, with, with, you know, with Grubhub from an aggregator standpoint. And for me, it's like, listen, I, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of space in the category. Um, the category, I say it's cluttered. It is cluttered, but there's plenty of, of, um, of different variations that people want. And we, we fill a specific need and we have great quality and we're continuing to in innovate too to kind of hit those other needs that we may not be talking to at this time. So are they, are they a competitor? Yeah, I mean, everyone who takes, a, if, if a customer's not coming in my door and they decide to go into someone else's door, then they're definitely a competitor. But we need to, we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard and, and work a little bit harder to make sure we get them back in. There. Share the last slice. I don't know if anybody already. Yeah, put. no, that's great. I mean, I, I know we. <laughs> I think I, as we look at, and I know we've got a video to show too. But sure. um, just with us for for partnerships and sports and sports marketing, it's it's just been a really fun ride this past year with the NFL and the past few years with the NCAA. But I think anyone's come who's in this space knows that there's there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. The biggest thing that, that I tell our team and even who I report to our president or our company, Artie, is you need to be authentic and you have to be real. And it's not just about your brand, it's about your person too. Your word is your word. Don't be a jerk. You know, and that's what, <laughs> so we, we, have, we have a no assholes policy at Pizza. There really is. I mean, that is a policy at our no assholes policy. And um, if you're an asshole, we really don't want you to be part of our brand. And gosh, Brett is cringing at me, but I'm sorry, <laughs> Brett. But um, it's a no assholes policy, and we like to treat people. And, and I think anyone, as we're interacting, engaging, we are, we are, you know, what you see is what you get, and don't be an asshole. So I think if I, you know, that my word of wisdom is is keep that in mind. Remember your roots, and, and don't be an asshole. Yeah, very. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> very classy. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, we have a video right. kind of encapsulate everything you just shared. Hopefully, yeah. the asshole policy is. Not oh yeah. So. This is a, yeah. That's great. <laughs> That was last year. That was one year. <laughs> Get up for Marianne. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah.